Welcome to Girl with Angie, I'm Angie. If you have not been to my channel yet, then you're missing out on some hydroponics. Now I do everything from tower type styles to deep water culture, which is in my other corner, and an aerial garden in the other corner. If you watch all my other videos, you'll see a little bit of each of those. But I've noticed since we are starting a new year, Today is actually a New Year's Day, so Happy New Year. As we're going into 2022, I wanna talk about a few questions that I've seen on the Facebook pages from all of you who have either purchased them for yourself for Christmas or got hydroponic systems as gifts. I might talk a little bit more in depth about the actual iHarvest itself, but a lot of this advice can be used for any indoor hydroponic system. First off, I wanna talk about reflective covers. A lot of you have asked if you could use tin foil or any other type of cover to cover the media of your net cup. Yes, you absolutely can. But for me personally, every time I have used foil to either block a hole that I'm not using or if I'm just wrapping up around the plant, I have noticed that algae really creeps in. So what I recommend are these actual reflective covers. You can get these on Amazon and no, you cannot find just the reflective covers themselves. They will come in kits of either the foam covers or they will come with extra net cups. I just set all that stuff aside. I don't use it. I want these. What I like about these is that they are black on the back side, which is going to stop any of the algae growth, and then they are reflective on the front, which actually is going to reflect the light around the back side of your plant, giving kind of a 360 of light to each of your plants. They're really easy to wrap around the base, or you can just put them on the net cup right when you're starting your plant. I've seen a lot of questions about the aphids, and I swear, I promise you all, I did everything you suggested and recommended. Also, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I had an aphid bug problem and I actually let my units rest around Thanksgiving. Right after Thanksgiving and we are starting to decorate for Christmas, I replanted and this will give you an idea of how fast these grow. This has only been a few weeks. I have one whole unit full of kale and the other one is lettuces, arugula, basil, and green onion. The only thing that worked for me was actually taking all the plants out, harvesting them, using everything, either feeding it to the chickens, freezing it, making basil butter, being creative with everything that I had harvested. Now, as I'm starting over and I'm trying to get the plants to stay bug free, I am using some of the recommended products. Now I'm using it as a preventative. One of the things is pure castle soap mixed with a neem oil. I will have all of the links to these products down in the description below. These are all Amazon affiliate links. No cost to you, but I do make mm, pennies of a commission. But these are the two that I mix together into a spray bottle. Just a very fine mist to keep the bugs at bay and make sure they don't come back. Another big question is adding your food or your nutrients when you're very first starting with your seeds. Adding food is not a super big important thing right away. Your seedlings don't need that. It's not until they actually get a root base that you're gonna wanna start adding the nutrients. But you do wanna balance out your pH as soon as you start filling up your tanks. Now this again is for any hydroponic system. You're gonna wanna use some kind of a meter for your pH levels. Just know certain plants like higher pH than others. I have lettuces over here that like it very low and the kale can handle it a little bit higher. This is why I like to run two units and I don't know, someday I could do three or four with as much growing as I'm doing right now. You can calibrate your testers when you first get them. There are full instructions with any type of meter that you are using. I'll tell you a little secret. I've never calibrated my meters. 
This might be totally the wrong thing to do and you can leave comments down below. I haven't noticed any issues. My plants obviously are doing fine and I'm always adding about the same. It's kind of like how we're creatures of habit where we always eat the same foods. Your plants are gonna like a certain pH and after a while you're gonna know one or two squirts of pH down once a week is what's gonna balance out your units. So for me, I don't play around too much with the calibrations, but I promise I will do a video on that very soon on how you can make sure your meters are running correctly. Now another question is the EC or the PPMs. Those are two different ways to actually read the food nutrients in your water. Your ECs is a measurement of an electrical current and the PPMs are particles per million. You can do it either way. It really doesn't matter. It's just what your brain works best with as far as numbers. EC, you're looking at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 1.0, and PPMs are in hundreds, 100, 400, 500, 2000. Now, my numbers fluctuate up and down. I'm not gonna panic and freak out if one of my numbers gets a little bit high. If it does get high, make sure you're not having your tank at a full level of water because then you can add water to it and then that will dilute out your food. If you need to, you can also use a water pitcher, scoop some of your water out and then add fresh water. But also remember that there are gonna be numbers, PPMs, ECs, pHs in your water. And I wanna talk about water for a minute. You have tap water, you have your well water. You can get reverse osmosis water. I personally am running on a well with a water softener. I've had a lot of conversations with different hydroponic system people and I have a great store nearby my house. So I'm very lucky and thankful for that where they really said the salt water and the salt is getting into my plants and it's going to change the way that they absorb the nutrients. Now I could shut off my water softener, get the water I need to refill the tank and then turn it back on. But again, experimenting and doing these things to let you know it's okay and things are still growing is a good way for me to let you know if it would work for you. Now, if you're growing things like tomatoes, green peppers, sugar snap peas, green beans, you're gonna want to be adding some kind of calcium. I did not do this at first, and over time I realized my plants were really suffering. Now I've started using something called kale mag. And just for an experiment, I'm adding it to the lettuces and to the kale. And quite honestly, I think they're doing really well. My lettuces don't seem to be browning out as fast and everything seems to be a little bit more green. So I don't know if it's because I have added this to the systems now that that's making the difference or it's just that we are totally bug free and none of the nutrients are being sucked out of the leaves. Another thing that you can add to your reservoirs or your tanks, again, this could be tower garden, arrow garden, garden, lettuce grow, it doesn't matter. If you wanna try and keep algae at bay, you can use food grade hydrogen peroxide. This is 3%. The big question, how much do I add? There are some instructions with it per gallon. You're adding water. How much water is actually in the tank? It could be a big mess if you think too much about it. It. What I do is two to three tablespoons right off when I'm gonna start my unit. And then every time I'm adding a couple of these, I add a squirt. It hasn't done anything to the plants. I'm not overdoing it. But I did add a really big squirt to the Aero Garden, which is a really tiny little tank. And I did see a little burnout of my plants. So dumping the water out, starting that fresh, and then making sure maybe just a little teaspoon or a half a teaspoon for the Aero Garden would be better. This will also help with your roots to be nice and white and crisp and clean, and that will also stop any of your root rot that you might see if the roots are just soaking up so much nutrients that it's rotting the root. Now let's talk about timers. Timers on pumps can be all kinds of different timers, different settings, depending on what you want to do. There really isn't a right answer or a right timer. It's just what you like. Some people go out and they buy timers that will hook up to their phone with Wi-Fi. They will have smart timers, smart plugs, smart cords. I just prefer the ones with the pins. Let's talk about what these pins are and what they do. 
Each pin represents 15 minutes. When the pins are down in a big, huge row like this, then it's telling you what time they're going to turn on, and then when it hits the pins that are up, it's gonna tell you what time the light is supposed to shut off. With your water pumps, I like to run 15 minutes on and 45 minutes off. You can even do less than that if you're just doing seedlings. They don't have the root base to really be sucking in that water. Just as long as your rapid rooter, your growing media, your rock wool, whatever it is, is staying wet, then you have the right amount of water. In that case, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna push down one pin for every four. Four pins would be an hour, one pin, 15 minutes within that hour. But when you're running lights, it's just all the way across. Another big concern I've seen that people are getting these units in after Christmas, we're setting them up, we're all excited, and you realize how bright they are. These are in my dining room, and my living room is just that direction. So watching TV at night in the winter time, when it's getting darker out for where I am in Northern Michigan, the lights are really insanely bright in the evening. Don't be afraid to turn on your lights or be setting your timers to come on super duper early. I think mine come on around 3 a.m. now. They used to come on at 4.30 a.m., but as our evenings were getting darker, I would just go over and keep twisting the timer and they'd pop off. I would get annoyed at night, twist the timer, and they would pop off. But by turning the timer and turning the dial, it's actually pushing them to come on earlier in the morning. Now, another question that comes specifically for the iHarvest is actually attaching them to your wall. There is a screw and a bracket that can go up on your wall. I do recommend it. Now, I didn't wanna do it when I first got them. I don't wanna drill them in, but it's really just one little screw and one little bracket, and it's no more than hanging a picture but that little bracket clips to the back and it stops it from moving away from the wall. That way, if you have any plants that are really big or really heavy and pushing a lot of pressure to the front of the unit, it's gonna keep it back and stop it from toppling over. Now, would they topple over? I'm not really sure. I would have to tip over a 14 gallon tank to take it down, but anything is possible and we just wanna stay on the safe side with that. Also with your net cups and your clips, you do wanna use the clips to hold the net cups in place. That's gonna stop your plants also from tipping forward and dripping down the front of your units. I have had some water dripping and it usually that comes from bigger plants like the kales or the Swiss chard where the base of the plant is really heavy and thick. So you can get down in there and you can trim some of those out as well and make sure that the net cups are sitting back and properly in position. Now I've recommended many times my fish tank wave makers and I've called them fish bubblers and I've been called out for that. So I will say it is a fish tank wave maker but that is going to constantly be stirring the water in your tank. So any system that you're using, it is constantly mixing your nutrients and constantly mixing up your pH. That also will stop any of the food settling to the bottom of the tank. Also another concern is the sound. The sound of the water pump kicking on and off can be a little loud and annoying. Go ahead and remove your basket, hang the water pump over top of it and put the basket back in. The only thing I warn about this is making sure your water levels are high enough because if that water pump is up higher and the water level goes down, you can burn out your pump. But as soon as you hear a little slurping, gurgling sound, then you're gonna wanna add water. Another thing is when you first set up any indoor hydroponic system, they're going to be louder. That rainfall that we all want so badly to listen to is gonna be a little on the noisy side. But once your plants get bigger and start to fill out, they will kind of soften the sound. Another thing that you can do is go ahead and spin some of your plants around. Sometimes a root from here and a root from here, they kind of combine together. They make one big heavy spot 
up for the water to fall down and hit inside of the base of the tank. If you spin them, you're gonna kind of break up the roots a little bit. You can also pull plants out and trim roots. There's nothing wrong with doing that either. And reaching your hand up inside of the unit and trying to find if there are any roots that are just gathering right above the basket and just grab those, rip them out, tear them out, it's okay. I like to clean them about every six months. So I have pulled them each apart, I have cleaned them. It just depends if you're gonna be going through a whole new cycle of plants and starting over. If not, you can also use your hydrogen peroxide with a paper towel and just kind of clean around the holes or wipe the outside of the unit. Also know that neem oil and castle soap are going to put a little bit of a layer on the outside of the unit and you'll want to wipe that down every once in a while because you can get a little soapy buildup or oily buildup. But taking them apart and cleaning them is not too difficult. I don't know about any of the other harvest growing systems, tower gardens, how easy those are to pull apart. So if you know, leave a comment down below and let everyone else know how easy those are to clean. Another debate is actually pollinating your plants. If you have plants that need to be pollinated, they are not self-pollinating. You can use a fan, you can shake them, you can do all kinds of different ways to pollinate the plants. I actually love the Bee the Bee from Arrow Garden. This is also similar to what you would see on a kid's toothbrush. So it's the same little thing if you wanna do that. You can actually see the pollen that was left on there from when I was doing my green beans and my sugar snap peas. Oh, and the jalapeno plants. I think this is adorable if you have kids and they can be the bee, it's kind of fun. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about today, I will be back to do more videos. So if you have not subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button so you are here for all of the videos. Fans are a big important thing. I don't think people realize how important it is to have airflow. When your plants are outside, they're getting the wind. That's also going to help with that pollination. But if your lettuces are starting to feel a little weak or limp, the fan will actually help the base get stronger with any of your plants. It's fighting against the wind and it has to grow a stronger, bigger base. And it's also going to help with the lettuces being more crisp. If you find that your lettuces are still too soft, go ahead and harvest them, put them into a Ziploc baggie. I like to add a paper towel to absorb any moisture that the refrigerator might give. Pop them in the refrigerator for eight to 10 hours or harvest the day before you're gonna be making a salad and they will crisp up in your refrigerator. If you guys have any more questions, I'm trying to keep up and read everything that is going on. Go ahead and post them here on this video description and I'll try and make a video just for you. You can also follow me on Instagram, you can follow me on Facebook, you can follow me on MeWe, you can follow me on Clubhouse, you can follow me on Twitter, I'm everywhere. And we will see you on my next episode. Have a good day.